Hey friends, welcome to another Cascade Crochet video. Um, okay, so today I wanted to talk to you about how to write your pattern. So we've gone through like the sort of the beginning steps of um, sort of how to design, like, you know, going through your trial and error process. And as you're going along, you want to write down the rows. So I've shown you before um, in a previous video, <laughs> like my little, I guess, my, my notebook where I write down all of my successes and failures um, or successes and lessons, I think is a, is a better way to phrase it. Um, so I've, I've shown you that um, and that's the sort of thing that you want to do. So that was Johan. He is jumping onto the bookshelf that's on the other side of this wall. Um, please forgive him for being such a ruckus child. He's woken up and decided that he he chooses mania. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, so we're writing out our pattern. So you've got it jotted down in your notes and you've come, come to the end. Congratulations, you're a genius, you're amazing, I love you, you're fantastic. Don't let anyone ever tell you anything different. Um, and now you want to write it down so that you can start the process of getting it published, doing patent testing and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I've pulled up one of my patterns just to the left of, uh, to, to my right. So I guess maybe to your left, um, uh, no, not to, to your right. Um, so I've pulled, pulled it up on this side. So I'm going to just flick my eyes back and forth to just to refer just to make sure that, you know, I get all the right information for you. So basically what you want to start off with is the name of the pattern. Um, the name's important. So go and have a look on Ravelry and the names that you've sort of been thinking about for the pattern, um, just type them in because the idea is that you don't want to have two patterns with the same name. So like something really generic, like, um, like bird shawl is probably going to be taken. So think about what really inspired you um, with, with whatever, whatever it is that you've made uh, and try and sort of elaborate on that and sort of make it sort of something nice and flowing. So I actually went and as soon as I had my idea for Parrots in Flight Shawl, I actually jumped on Ravelry and reserved the name. So I like put a picture of the yarn that I was using saying pattern to be you know, to coming and um, so, you know, you can, you can do that if you want to. Um, it's just because I was really, um, I guess I was really attached to that name. So anyway, so jump on there, have a look. Um, if it's not there, fantastic. So then you want to say basically the pattern name by you. So that'll be uh, so what I normally write on mine is like by Cassiopeia Carius of Cass K Crochet. So basically it just sort of puts your full name on there and then your, uh, I guess, business or your or what you want to be known by online. So all of my handles are Cass K Crochet because um, Cassiopeia Carius Crochet is quite the mouthful. Um, so you want to have that. And then on the front page, you also want to have a picture of your shawl and if, or, or whatever you're writing on, I'm, I'm just going to say that it's shawl because I'm referring to a shawl pattern here. Um, but this is whatever you've created. So whether it's resin art, jewelry, um, anything like that, something that you're doing a lesson for or writing out a pattern for, this counts for you. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to say shawl because that's what I've done. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, it can be anything blanket, you know, hoodie, formal dress, whatever. Okay. So, um, you want a picture of your finished object. Um, ideally like one of the best pictures that shows off all of the, um, all of the intricacies of the design and if at all possible, um, include a picture of what inspired you. So for my part, it's in flight shawl because it's got that beautiful rainbow um, with the first one because I designed it in that rainbow color. Um, so I've got mine with the shawl 
just showing all the colors and then the ridges of the wings and all of that. And then next to it is a picture I took of a rainbow lorikeet when I went for a walk just down the road. Um, so you've got that there. And then just underneath it, you want to, I guess, write a little bit of what inspired you to create the pattern and why. Um, just because it makes it a little bit more interesting rather than here's a picture, here's the pattern. Um, you know, I, I personally really love when it comes with a bit of story to tell you what was in the designer's mind when they uh, thought of the pattern. So, you know, just a little paragraph, it can be just a couple of lines, it can be like a bit of a story if you want. Um, or you can have like a, just like a little paragraph and then, you know, just write like C end. And then like at the end, you can write like a big story and tell people like it was inspired by like, you know, um, like a fable or, you know, something that's going on in your life and you can tell, tell the story there. So you just want short sort of a paragraph long couple of lines about what inspired you to write pattern. Um, okay, then you want to sort of have a section that just says some important notes and then you'll write item type, shawl, dress, blanket, whatever. Um, in the next line you want to write the terminology, so if it's US or UK terms for crochet because they are quite different. Um, I always write mine in US just because that's how I learnt. So when I was when I went online the first time, I sort of started learning. It was US terms, so um, just keep that in mind. So just yeah, just write that in there. Um, then you want to put difficulty. So if it's really intricate, it might be an expert level item that you've created. Um, if it's kind of, you know, using sort of basic, uh, basic stitches, just, you know, put together in an interesting way, it might be for an adventurous beginner. Um, or if it's something sort of in the middle, it might be intermediate. So just use your best judgment with that. Um, just think about, like, try and put yourself back to, like, when you were a beginner, if you could have done this or... Um, you know, if you, if it's uh, like a little bit advanced, so it might depend on the complexity of some of the stitches that you've used. Um, next you want to put your recommended hook size. So I work a lot with four millimeter hooks, um, which is G size. So you can look up hook size conversions online. Um, so you might be yeah, like in America and you're like, I'm using an E hook and then you'll have to like try and convert it to what it is for um, other parts of the world that you don't know, have them in millimeters so because your hooks don't always have that written on them I know that mine don't um, then you want the recommended yarn weight so you can usually find that on the label um, it will tell you what sort of weight it is um, meep, 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 meep. Well, it does on this one, so I guess I'm a liar in that one, in that way. Um, but you can kind of, um, when you purchase the yarn, um, just jump online, and you should be able to scroll down to the specifications, and it'll tell you like lace weight, sport weight, DK bulky, you know, and so forth. So um, make sure you write the the recommended yarn weight, um, and then recommended yarn. So like the yarn that you designed it for. Um, it, cause I design a lot of mine for, uh, for sport weight cotton, um, just because I live in Australia, so it's very hot here. Um, I want something that I can, you know, just drape over my arms and it's not going to be too hot in summer, but also then drape over and use as a scarf in winter. So if I, if I fold it over, it's going to be nice and warm. Um, but just keep in mind you can use different yarns for it, different weights. Um, it'll just come out bigger or smaller. So that's something that you need to consider, but not quite yet. So let's just, let's put a pin in that. Um, so after, after that section where you've got your item type, your terminology, which is your US or UK crochet terms, uh, the difficulty level, recommended hook size, recommended yarn weight and recommended yarn. Um, you want to put some pattern notes. Um, so that's 
the thing with your pattern notes is basically explaining um, any sort of repetitive things that happen. So um, basically mine is uh, each new row in this shawl begins with a chain three unless noted. This chain three counts as a double crochet. Um, so, and then I, something I learned from my first shawl um, that people sort of were a little bit confused about and I'm really glad that they told me. Um, so some I would write, you know, chain three and double crochet in the same stitch and people were just like, I don't really know what she's talking about. So I had to make a note to say, each row that's noted chain three plus one double crochet in each stitch means that you'll be working the first double crochet into the chains into the turning stitch or the base of your chain three. So you just want to clarify just little things. It might be it might be sort of common sense to you, or you might not need to um, really think about it yourself because it's something that you've designed. But you just want to make it as easy as possible for everyone else. Um, then you you'll put a note saying you know this item is like worked in the round or worked from side to side or you know there's no wrong side no right side or um, the right side is you know the the row with the side with the textured stitches um, just make a note of that so people know sort of how they're working it and sort of if you know if it's like inside out or, or whatever because it can be a little bit confusing um, so then uh, any interesting <laughs> interesting stitches you do um, I'll always say okay so for the open shell stitch which is one that I use a lot um, I'll say you know um, I have a tutorial for it because I have a tutorial for it and then I'll sort of put the YouTube link in there and just you know it's just as a guide to help people um, and like magic circle I'll say Magic Circle, um, the best one that I've found is the Bella Coco one. Props to Bella Coco, she's amazing, my hero. Um, she was, the, her tutorials were actually the ones that made a lot of crochet click for me. So, you know, so much love to her. Um, but yeah, I found her Magic Circle tutorials are fantastic. So I've got a link into that. So people just know anything that's a little bit out of the ordinary stitch wise uh, you want to put a link to a tutorial for it just in case so yeah just because you're super familiar with something doesn't mean that everyone else is going to be so you you really have to keep that in mind it's not that you're like writing to like the lowest common denominator it's more that you know you have this experience and someone might have this experience so you might have done this particular stitch a lot and another person may have never done it in any of the work that they've done so it's more just about helping people so if there's ever a gap in knowledge or um, so, so some sort of miscommunication or they might not quite understand what you're talking about you can link them to a tutorial um, then you want to make a note about gauge so for some projects obviously as you know gauge is super important um, for most of mine uh, I use pretty loose gauge uh, gauge is not super important <laughs> um, so with mine it's just like yeah loose tight you do you um, but that's not definitely not the case for all um, all designs so just keep that in mind make a note about you know gauge is important gauge is not important um, and then you know you'll write things like um, if you choose to continue this pattern beyond the rows outlined um, you know this is how you can continue it on just to give them like a little bit of instruction if they want to keep going because um, sometimes you know what fits perfectly on you somebody might prefer it like a little bit longer or like if you've designed a blanket somebody might want to make it huge um, you know or you know just 
you just have to keep that in mind. So um, I'll always write a little note just saying, you know, if you complete, I've like, you'll have enough to complete up to X row. Um, I've chosen to do a row of single crochet in a different color as a feature, um, but you don't have to. I recommend it. Um, then you want to write if blocking is optional or required for the for the pattern um, and having some photos of the blocking is important. Um, so I hope that's pretty clear like that's like literally just the, the first page of, of things that you need to have um, and I really do stress that it's a need because without it you're pattern is going to be a little bit more difficult for people who haven't had the same experiences as you so you might call a stitch one thing and then it's somebody calls it something completely different so if you can show them a tutorial then they can go oh okay then yep no I see that oh, I've done that stitch a hundred times yeah that's that's fine or oh cool now I know you know when you stitch like that's fantastic I love it so there you go, um, so that's the, the first sort of lot of instructions that you need to, to write out your pattern. Um, it does take a little bit of time. Um, and I just want to stress before we go further that taking photos of like every step that you go, that you do is so important. So like when you do like your magic circle, you might do like three rows, take a photo. And then like at the 10th row, take a photo, zoom in on some of the stitches, take photos of the stitches. Like if things are placed weird or sound weird, take photos of it, take photos, take photos, take photos, take a hundred more photos than you will ever need. Um, but photos are so important just because not everyone is a, can like read something and just go, yep, that's fine. I can see it in my mind. A lot of people learn visually so having photos to help um, instruct them is just it's it's beyond helpful so you'll notice that i didn't have a stack of photos in my first pattern but from then on i sort of i figured out that no i should be having a lot of stitch a lot of um a lot of photos for instructional purposes um then you want to do your abbreviations so like ch chain or dc double crochet you know mc magic circle um and like any abbreviations that you're going to use on a regular basis just jot down a little list so that people can refer back to it um and then you want to basically write you know row one this is what you do row two this is what you do so you know make sure that there's like a nice big space between each row just so that there's um it's really clear that it's like this is a row space this is a row space and you know after if you know five six rows um instructions add in a couple of photos and then that's how you'll continue on so do a few rows add a couple of photos do a few rows add a couple of photos um it's just really good to to mix to I guess um, mix it up as well because just a wall of text can be really confronting sometimes um, I'm sure like you guys can remember like back in school you would get a textbook and it's just like a wall of text and you're just like what the f am I gonna do with this so just keep in mind um, that a wall of text can be really confronting so add some photos add some color add some brightness um, anything that is an important note throughout the pattern so if you're coming up to a section of repeats you might want to put a little note uh, just like in italic or, or in bold it's up, up to you completely how you how you format it um, you know it's dealer's choice some would say um, I normally put mine in italics and I'll just say like you know um, rows 9 to 12 are going to be repeated this many times um, the, the only change will be an additional stitch in this row this row this row and this row so that's again something that people just go right yep and take a note of but you'll still write 
the instructions for that so in every row so it's like row nine you know one double crochet two double crochets in the next stitch continue to the end and then you know row 13 I think is like one double crochet in the first stitch one double crochet in the next stitch two double cro crochets in the third stitch and then repeat that the whole way so you you've made a note of it in italic so that they know that even though it's a repeat there is a slight difference so keep those notes up and then once you start getting to I guess where the pattern gets interesting slash tricky um, lots of photos so you know how I said do the zoomed in photos of particular stitches so do that and you can literally pop your finger on it so like d get a manicure like just your pointer finger <laughs> and then take a photo of you like literally pointing that one stitch so like let me just pop this off off Cynthia my my dress model 90s 90s kids know um so I'll be like you know this is netting you know chain like one double crochet chain one here and then you'll get a zoomed in photo of my non-manicured fingers unfortunately um just going point 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 so um that's really important just so that people can see exactly what you're talking about um because because sometimes uh crochet patterns can be really tricky when you read them and you're just like what the frick but then you know you, your abbreviation notes and your pattern notes and then your further italic notes help explain and then you've got the pictures as well to help explain so you just keep going for however long it goes lots and lots of photos lots of photos just there's no such thing as too many photos just because you want to show exactly what you mean so and then you keep going until the last row um, and then basically if you have if the pattern requires blocking um, then you'd be like okay so now we're moving on to blocking and you'll have have some pictures of sort of how you've blocked it so like pins into specific spots so it might be because mine have feathers if you want to if you want to block my patterns I'm like block into the edge of the feather so that it is sharp um, but you know other patterns don't require blocking but that's just a, an example that I, I can pull for you guys um, so I had a few photos of blocking for my eagle tail shawl because that one does require blocking um, simply because it emphasizes the the tail um, and then basically you just say cool you've you've done it um, if if you create it and pop it online just um, tag me on various social medias and like you know put your social media handles on there so that if somebody creates it they can tag you hopefully and you can see some of your finished product I hope that wasn't too confusing <laughs> uh, basically the key with patterns is there's no such thing as over explaining um, it's like you know if somebody doesn't need the extra information they can skip past it but some people do need the extra information so best of luck watch this video as many times as you like um, if you need pattern help like writing the patterns leave me a comment and I will do my very best to help you out all right now <laughs> sorry <laughs> now we're on to today's lipstick which is a really really nice uh, pink um, like it reminds me of rose petals so I really love it it's a NYX and it's a turnt up and the color is Tules number 14 so beautiful fantastic I love this I love you I hope you have the most wonderful day and enjoy the pattern writing process it can take a while it's okay just take your time with it you know it'll come you'll do it eventually it took me a month to write my pirates in flight pattern because I was having a lot of issues with 
the end of row counts, so the stitch counts, um, just because my, my brain wasn't processing the numbers, so I was like counting a row and I'd count it five times and get five different, different numbers, so uh, I had to do a lot of work to actually get those correct. Um, so, you know, it's okay, take your time, like make sure that you're happy with it, get some beautiful photos, uh, add in as many photos as you like or as you can, um, add in tutorials, links, um, make sure it's a hyperlink if you can, because then it'll just take, they can look at it in a PDF and then just click on it and it'll take them straight to YouTube. Um, you know, if you, if you want, create a YouTube channel yourself and create um, the, the actual instruction for the specific stitch yourself if you like, um, like I did. <laughs> I didn't do it for all of them, but I did do quite a few fancy stitches and some interesting stitches, so, and um, yeah, some, some basic tutorials. Anyway, that's enough of me. We've gone on almost half an hour, so I'll leave you be. If you need help with pattern writing, you know, drop me a message, rewatch the video, do whatever you like, okay? Um, and I'm going to record another video for you in a minute. So, mwah, love you so much, and I will see you later. Bye.